This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. Welcome in. I am Gary Seegers, your host. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures, or just make it easy on yourself. Go to winningcureseverything.com. It's got our Facebook, YouTube, uh, podcast, everything else. Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to YouTube. Leave some comments. Share it out. Tell everybody about it. We're glad you're here. It's Tuesday, March the 12th. Here's the rundown of what we're going to go over today. Uh, The college entrance scam. I'm going to read a little bit from a Yahoo story and kind of give you a gist of of exactly what is going on with it. Uh, SEC tournament odds and preview. The SEC tournament begins tomorrow on Wednesday. I am excited about that. And NFL free agency. We're going to talk about a few moves here and there. Chris and I will dig deeper into that. Uh, first off, though, uh, let me get rid of this thing. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on all six of them over at tunicatravel.com. Chris and I will be at Sam's Town Casino in Tunica Thursday, March 21st, Friday, March 22nd. Go down there. Check that thing out. We're going to have a good time. We're broadcasting live at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, it'll be from 10 to 11. The games will kick off or tip off at 11 a.m. Come down to Sam's Town in Tunica. We're spending the night on Thursday night. We're going to have a good time from the moment of the first tip all the way until the end of the uh, the first round, the round of 64. So uh, you can find more information over at winningcureseverything.com or on the Facebook page. We've got an event page set up for it. Go check that out. Let's jump into the college entrance scam. Uh, This is, the FBI has jumped into this, right? And there's college coaches that took bribes, which that was the big issue with all of the college basketball stuff, right? They call it a a bribery case because financial advisors, everybody else, they were giving money to assistant coaches, to influence players to go with certain people, right? Shoe companies doing the same thing, giving players, parents, and the players themselves, whoever, $100,000, $50,000, whatever, to go to Duke. Like Nike pays somebody to go to Duke. Adidas pays somebody to go to Kansas. Under Armour pays somebody to go to Maryland. And while the only one that's been caught so far is Adidas, that's where this comes in is – The college coaches in this instance have nothing to do with football or basketball or anything. In that situation, initially, that was people paying players to please come to this school. In this instance, it is parents paying people at the school to be able to get them in or paying somebody that has an in at the school to be able to get them into the school, right? And because of the way that this is run – anytime one of these wealthy kids that that could not have gotten in on their own actually got into the school, a spot was shut off and somebody that actually worked their rear end off got rejected from the school. So while the FBI, I don't know, needs to be involved in this, it is nice to see somebody keeping everybody on their toes, right? So here is the beginning of Dan Wetzel's column from today. It's FBI... College coaches took bribes to help admit unqualified students. And this article is from today. Uh, It says, In November of 2017, a wealthy, desperate parent willing to do just about anything to get their child into Yale contracted a man, or sorry, contacted a man named William Rick Singer who ran a business disguised as a charity that could accomplish that goal. The student did not have the qualifications on her own. Singer had a solution. He took the participation as an artist and changed it to soccer even creating a false online profile that made her the co-captain of a prominent club soccer team from Southern California, according to a federal uh, federal indictment. Singer then contacted longtime Yale women's soccer coach Rudy Meredith, who the university provides a certain amount of slots to get recruits admission to the school, even if they are below traditional standards. It is designed to help uh, the program remain competitive. Since the Ivy League does not provide athletic scholarships, it is worth no money, just access to the school. Meredith, in turn, designated Yale Applicant 1 as a recruit for the Yale women's soccer team, uh, thereby facilitating her admission to Yale, despite the fact that, 
as he knew at the time, Yale applicant one did not play competitive soccer. In January, the art student was admitted to Yale as a soccer recruit. It was then that Singer sent Meredith a check for $400,000. Months later, the parents donated $1.2 million to Singer's charity. They may have even written it off on their taxes. And it says, This is the heart of a widespread scam that federal prosecutors out of Boston unveiled Tuesday morning, leading to the arrest of 50 individuals. College coaches, administrators, 33 parents, including prominent actresses Felicity Huffman from Desperate Housewives and Lori Laughlin from Full House. You remember her, Aunt Becky, all that. Uh, and a lot of these centered around Olympic sport college coaches, including some at Texas, USC, Georgetown, Stanford, etc. Along with this, uh, they also featured Singer paying to fix standardized test scores to help the admission process. This stuff is insane. And it shows if you got money, you can buy your way into anything, right? But rather than just giving a donation to the school, they had to find a way to actually get their kids in, whether that's fixing test scores, finding a way to get in under the very bottom rung at the school, like at Yale. You, it, the admission standards are excellent, right? The only way to get in if you don't have those test scores, if you don't have the GPA, if you don't have all that, is to be an athlete and find a way to get in that way because – it, Yale, for average students, is up here. For Yale athletes, it's down here. So if you can just get right above that and find a way to be an athlete, that's the way it works. It is nuts if you think about it because the coaches in these Olympic sports make next to nothing. You know, at maybe eighty dollars to $100,000 a year, and then you've got a parent that's or a, a person that's willing to give you $400,000 to take this one person as a recruit, and it doesn't matter in these Olympic sports if you're good or not. I mean, rowing and whatever. Like, if you've got really good guys that you're just filling out your bench with people that, that it doesn't matter, yeah, it's easy to get caught up in this stuff. Great story. Go read the rest of it. It's Dan Wetzel over at Yahoo Sports. Uh, it is insane. There's also a really good article over at The Ringer about it, but the the college entrance scam Whew, it is it is on out there. Uh, let's talk about the SEC tournament. That begins on Wednesday, March 13th. Uh, well, I'm going to talk, you know, the first two matchups, Missouri at or Missouri against Georgia. Uh, that's a 12 and 13 seed, and then Texas A&M and Vanderbilt, both of those Wednesday night. None of those teams is going to make it further than maybe Friday. And even then, I don't think either one of them gets out of Thursday, right? Because winner of A&M and Vanderbilt has to play Mississippi State. Winner of Missouri and Georgia has to play Auburn. Both of those teams are pretty hot right now. Uh, let's talk about the bubble teams. Uh, if, if we want to talk about odds to win the, the tournament, if you want the best odds, LSU and Auburn are both at plus 420. They have to play it, – so Auburn would have to play the winner of Missouri and Georgia and then play South Carolina, who has a double bye even though they're 16 and 15 on the season. They're non-conference. They were awful, but they, they went 11 and 7 in the SEC. South Carolina did beat Auburn early in the season. I would go with Auburn. They are hot right now. They are, I mean, hitting threes like crazy. Good tra uh, good transition defense. Like, they are, that's a really good basketball team. LSU, who knows what's going to happen. Will Wade apparently not coming back for the SEC tournament. Javante Smart, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't play. Who knows what to make of this team. They might come out pissed off. They might come out confused. Who knows? Uh, so if I was going to take anybody, Auburn and LSU are both plus 420. I'd probably take Auburn there. Uh, Tennessee is your favorite, and they are at plus 190. Oh, and Kentucky's at plus 190 as well. Uh, and these lines are over at my bookie. So you could have different odds to win the tournament from somewhere else, but either way. Uh, the bubble teams is what I'm interested in. The cutoff for the last 20 years basically has been you have to be at least four games above 500 to get into the NCAA tournament. That's just kind of been a, a rule. Like it's a, a, it's a bar that the NCAA tournament committee has set because it's been a while since anybody got in that wasn't at least like 19 and 15, right? Alabama 19 and 15 last year, Vanderbilt the year before that. Uh, Georgia years ago was 16 and 14 under Jim Herrick. 
but they had one of the most insane schedules you have ever seen. So they got rewarded for their strength of schedule and whatnot. But that's been 15 years ago, 16, 17 years ago, whatever it is. I think it might have been 2000, 2001, whenever it was. But this year you've got Florida at 17 and 14, Arkansas at 17 and 14, Alabama at 17 and 14. Arkansas is rolling. Florida, eh, I mean, they they ended the season against some really good teams. They had a nice winning streak going, um, but did not finish strong. Alabama, complete dumpster fire, two and six in their last eight. Uh, lost, you know, basically to any decent team that they played other than at South Carolina, and that was four games ago. So, um, Alabama would play Ole Miss in the second round and then play Kentucky. Both would be quad one games. You win both of those. You're at 19 and 15. A really good strength of schedule, probably going to be in the top 20. You win two games, you can find a way to get back into the tournament. I don't think it's going to happen. But uh, same thing with Florida and Arkansas. Florida and Arkansas, either one of those win. I think Arkansas would be a quad two win right now for Florida. Florida would be a quad one for Arkansas. Um, but in the next round, you got LSU. So you win one game and then lose your 18 and 15, probably not going to cut it. If you're Arkansas, you got to beat both. If you're Florida, you got to beat both. That's just how it goes. So look for whoever is in the semifinals to make the NCAA tournament, other than if it is South Carolina. South Carolina at 16 and 15, there is just no way. They're going to have to win the conference tournament to get in. They've got way too many bad losses from the beginning of the season. It cut South Carolina out. Florida, Arkansas, Alabama, that's who you need to watch to see if the SEC can get eight teams in. Ole Miss, I think, is absolutely in. Mississippi State is in. Auburn, LSU, Kentucky, Tennessee. That's that's your deal right now. People think Florida's probably in. I doubt it. Um, but we'll see. I mean, 17 and 14 is, is just not a very good record, even if the computers like Florida. Uh, let's talk about NFL free agency real quick before we do a, a few college basketball picks. Um, Nick Foles to the Jaguars. Now, Chris and I are going to go over like the full realm. Uh, Foles to the Jaguars is probably the biggest free agent movement. Uh, that's the, the most impactful because it gives the Jags a legit chance to compete for a division title, compete for the playoffs. Saints signed Latavius Murray at running back. They had been in contract talks with Mark Ingram. They've already got Alvin Kamara. Ingram probably wanted more money. He is the all-time touchdown leader for the Saints. He wanted to stay there, but he also understands what he's worth. I can understand the Saints not wanting to pay that much for a second running back. I get it. Uh, Ingram appears headed to the Ravens. That is all the rumors right now. I could see him landing in a couple of different spots. The Ravens make the most sense. They cut Alex Collins uh, because of a uh, an arrest. I think it was a DUI or something like that. But Mark Ingram would be the lead back for the Baltimore Ravens. That makes a whole lot of sense. They love Alabama guys up there. Uh, part, well, Ozzie Newsom, you guys know the, the connection. Uh, Landon Collins, speaking of Alabama guys, Landon Collins, six-year, $84 million contract with the Redskins. That is a massive contract for a safety. And that's he wanted to play for the Redskins. Like he said coming out of college, if you could play for one NFL team, most guys say, you know, oh, I just want to play in the league. He said he wanted to play for the Redskins because of Sean Taylor. And now he's getting his wish. But six years, $84 million with a ton of money guaranteed, that's a big deal. C.J. Mosley leaving the Ravens for the Jets. He signed a big deal. Uh, Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger, signed a three-year deal with the Chiefs. That is a fantastic signing. That guy can absolutely play football. You guys all know that. He played for the Texans last year, did a fantastic job. It was a one-year deal. Uh, so he is out and and going to play with Patrick Mahomes and that whole bunch, uh, trying to shore up that defense in Kansas City. Chris and I, again, we will talk more about the NFL free agency stuff uh, later this week. But, uh, but yeah, those were, were crazy. The other big one, the Raiders signing Trent Brown. I, I don't understand it. They gave him a ton of money. He is now the highest paid tackle in the NFL. And this is after he was basically known as a backup as a guy that's hurt all the time, he had one fantastic year, won a Super Bowl, all that. The Patriots were never going to pay him that much money. They've got Isaiah Wynn, you know, ready to come in and take that starting spot anyway. Uh, that's just a lot of money for Trent Brown. But either way, um, 
let's move on to the college basketball picks. Uh, went three and two yesterday. Hit on our parlay. Uh, I did. Uh, I did some live betting last night. Went nine and two overall uh, with the two that I lost. I, I should probably start posting the live bets. But either way, uh, already lost one today uh, with Georgia Tech. I had Georgia Tech plus two from earlier today against Notre Dame, and Notre Dame just went bananas from three-point range in the first half. Georgia Tech got it back within six in the second half. Uh, could not close it out. They end up losing by seven, so I lost on that one. But I got three other ones. Uh, one is a total, one is a side, and I've got a five-team money line parlay that is plus 150. Let's do the uh, the total first. I've got over 133 in Northern Kentucky and Wright State. Uh, I think that these two teams, even though this is a championship game, even though this is for an NCAA tournament, both of these teams can score. I expect this game to be in the upper 60s or the 70s. I think it's over 133. I mean, 70 to 63 gets you to 133. I think this is more along the lines of 71 to 70, something like that. I could even see it going to overtime. So I will take over 133 on that one. Uh, I've got Nebraska-Omaha minus 2.5 against North Dakota State. North Dakota State has not been very good this year uh, or at the end of the regular season. Now, obviously, they had to win some games to get to this point, but Nebraska-Omaha minus 2.5. I like that one a lot. It may be up to 3.5 in some spots right now. Either way, buy the point back down, get it under 3. Nebraska-Omaha, I think, wins the game. Uh, money line parlay. Here's the deal, okay? I've got Prairie View, Texas Southern, Gonzaga, Louisiana Monroe, and Nebraska Omaha. All on a money line parlay that is plus 150. So if you are a low key better, that's 10 bucks to win 15. Right? Simple enough. So take all of those Prairie View, Texas Southern, Gonzaga, Louisiana Monroe. Nebraska, Omaha, and you're going to cash. I feel good about it. We hit our one last night with Central Michigan, Hofstra, and Wofford. Uh, that one was uh, minus 115, but obviously the more teams you put into it, the less chance it is of hitting. So we got it at plus 150. It's going to help your bankroll a little bit. Uh, as always, you can find the picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Go up to the navigation bar, click on gambling picks. Ah, what a what a fantastic week. We got afternoon basketball all week long. I cannot wait. Uh Go over, get the picks over there, subscribe to YouTube, subscribe to the podcast, leave some comments, share this thing out, tell your friends about it. We do it every day, 10 to 15 minutes a day, sometimes 20, whatever it is. Uh, But yeah, subscribe, share it out, tell everybody about it. We hope that you will join us every day from here on out. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.